This is the fifth state winning headlines, your media police post coming to you from Nairobi, Kenya, from the Fortal School of Government. In this segment, we summarize some of the headlines that you may have missed this morning. But we also take a look at some of the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. Today is the 11th of October, 2022. And I'm 2M. I am AX. And I am 2J. And in case you missed today's headlines, here they are. In the Daily Nation, pay cuts loom in Ruto budget plan. The Standard. Hustlers miss out on Ruto's 30-day boon. The star, Farouk Kibet, the total man in Ruto presidency. Mm. And in the People Daily, Ruto, open up EAC for trade. So, we are 27 days into the Ruto presidency. Mm. And so far, Mr. Ruto has spent almost 60% of his time outside of Kenya. Mm. That is 16 days abroad and only 11 days at home. <laughs> is this concerning? <laughs> or is this foreign relations at play? Mm. We want to share just two theories. One is personal and the other is presidential. The personal acknowledges that William Ruto has big shoes to fill on the international stage. Hate or love Uhuru Kenyatta, you cannot deny that the man was damn good at diplomacy and the art of the charm offensive. Yeah. So Ruto must chart his own path, and this means that he will reject and undo Uhuru's diplomatic legacy at all costs. Mm -hmm. The presidential considers that Ruto is simply a man at work. He must make good on the very many bottom-up promises he made, and this will not be an easy job. International collaboration is important, and Uhuru had mastered this. Mm. Now, as Tuam told us last week, the return of port operations from Naivasha to Mombasa will impact the price of goods in Uganda. Mm. Good for country is not always good for country. Correct. So the question is, how will Ruto satisfy hustlers at home but keep good relations with the world beyond? Mm. So political scientist Robert Putnam famously referred to this balancing act as the two-level game. Yes. So on one level is the domestic stage. Mm. Here we have groups like traders, border border riders, farmers and the like, pursuing their interests by getting the government to adopt favorable policies. Correct. It's in the government's interest to negotiate with the people. Mm. And on level two is the international stage, where that same government tries to get the best agreements for their own country. Mm. In theory, this is easy, but the trick is in the balance. Again, the same example. If you deny Uganda access to cheap and fast trading routes on a Monday, mm. by Friday, a Ugandan lieutenant by the name of Mohozi <laughs> is threatening to capture Nairobi <laughs> because no country exists in a vacuum. Correct. So Putnam argues that neither of the two games can be ignored over the other. Yes. There must be consistency. And this could explain why, as part of his tour around the world, Ruto made a point to stop in Uganda to cool diplomatic tensions. And his other visits uh, make sense too. Mm. The UK, US, Tanzania and Uganda are some of our biggest trading partners. Right. UDA promised hustlers wheelbarrows, jobs and access to markets. So maybe foreign trips is how he makes good on those promises. Mm. But unfortunately, Ruto is still in the shadow of his old boss. Mm. As Ruto met with heads of states from Jamaica, mm. St. Kitts and Nevis, and Antigua and Barbuda, he did so courtesy Uhuru. Mm. His trip to Ethiopia to witness the launch of Safaricom's operations happened mm. courtesy Uhuru. Yeah. And on the domestic front, the script is exactly the same. As Ruto waved off tea under the historic Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement, yes. we must remember that this was pushed for and ratified under the leadership of Uhuru Kenyatta. Yes. The same goes for the opening of affordable housing projects that happened courtesy Uhuru. Yes. The point is simple. William Ruto is carefully crafting his imagery, his, his image, <laughs> courtesy Uhuru. Yes. After all, he was Uhuru's deputy president. president. But Mr. President, Uhuru, uh, sorry, Ruto, <laughs> we will not clap for you just yet. Instead, we shall offer you some unsolicited advice from Henry Kissinger, who said that foreign policy begins where domestic policy ends. Mm. 
it would appear that you may have read the quote in the wrong order. <laughs> you are yet to solidify your domestic policy. And the danger of doing that is losing the people you need the most. Yes. The people, yes. the hustlers. Yes. So take your time, sir. You have 10 years to make a mark. Yes. Fantastic. Fantastic. Tuje, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Do you think President Ruto met Muhozi in Uganda? A hundred percent they met and I think he had to give a very formal apology. Oh, Muhozi? <laughs> yes, Muhozi. <laughs> Now, Dindi Nyoro told country yesterday that for Deputy President Rigathi Gashawa to access his boss, he has to go through Farouk Kibet. Mm. Rigathi, on the other hand, last week told us that he delivered 47% of Ruto's entire vote. Mm. Question is if Rigathi delivered 50% of William Ruto's entire vote, why does he need permission to see Ruto? Mm -hmm. If indeed it is true that Rigathi requires permission to see Ruto, we must ask ourselves what will happen when one day Farouk declines Rigadi's request to see his boss. Yeah. And also, if it is true Rigadi requires permission, then we can also conclude that Ruto has solidified his kitchen cabinet. As 2J told us last week, a kitchen cabinet is a circle of friends and business partners who hold no official office, but hold all the real power. Mm. Sometimes they may hold office, but when they meet past hours with the president, what they do is unofficial. Mm. President Jomo Kenyatta had Mbiu Koinange, Charles Jonjo, G.K. Karidi and, uh, in his kitchen cabinet. Mm. Daniel Arab Moy had Nicholas Piwot, Joshua Kulei, Ezekiel Barngetun, and Mark To. Mm. Mwai Kibaki had Joe Anjoi, Jenga Karume, Stanley Murage, Chris Murungaru, and Materi Kiriri. President William Ruto has Farouk Kibet, Oscar Sudi, David Langat, Joseph Nock, and Felix Koske. Mm. There may be even be more, but the common thread here is that each president from independence has always picked his tribesmen as part of his ki uh, kitchen cabinet. Yep. And that's because there are certain instructions that can only be given in mother tongue. Yep. If Rigadiga Shagwa has any hopes of being president, he must build his kitchen cabinet now. A kitchen cabinet in waiting, if you will. <laughs> Rigadi should build a network of Mount Kenya heavyweights that he can meet after hours and plot his political future. Because if he doesn't, the Ruto kitchen cabinet will have him for lunch. If Dindi Nyoro can tell us his Kikuyu kingpin has to ask for permission to see his boss, then it means Mount Kenya has lost its political leverage. Could I be wrong? I hope I am. Mm. Okay, so. Last week, 2M reminded us that no one ever seizes power with the intention of relinquishing it. Mm. But for President Ruto to seize power, he needs all three branches of government. And right now, he has two. Today, I want to discuss Ruto's plan to co-opt the third, and that is the judiciary. President Ruto already has the executive in his pocket. And last week, he secured his hold over the National Assembly after Watangula ruled that Kenya Kwanzaa has a parliamentary majority. Mm. This leaves only one branch outside of Ruto's direct control, the judiciary. Mm. And as a matter of course, the post-2010 constitution judiciary is hostile to the executive. Yeah. Romancing them is as difficult as romancing a stone. Yes. And Ruto knows it. Mm. That is why he is drawing a page from Robert Greene's The Art of Seduction. Mm. In the book, Greene advises Casanova's that they should never give the impression that they are romancing a girl that will raise a resistance that they will never be able to lower. <laughs> Green also advises would-be suitors to create a need and stir anxiety and discontent. And this is what President Ruto has done. Ruto has extended the judiciary an olive branch without fully planting the seed for an olive tree. For example, in his inauguration, in, in his inauguration speech, President Ruto appointed the six judges from the Court of Appeal and raised the judiciary's budget by an extra three billion shillings per year. Yeah. But there is something rather curious about this three billion. This sum is two billion shillings less than the additional five billion the judiciary had requested earlier this year, and not nearly enough to help the judiciary meet their 39 billion shilling budget need. Mm. And because of this romance, the judiciary has become friendly to the executive. This is why we ask the following questions. The High Court reversed Amos Kimunya's acquittal, mm. and he was an opponent. Now, 
was this romance. Mm. Linturi's alleged rape case was quickly withdrawn after he was appointed minister. Mm. Was this romance? <laughs> Waititu's alleged corruption was also withdrawn, and meanwhile, Waluke, who defected from UDA to Jubilee, was jailed for 57 years and fined a billion shillings. <laughs> was this romance? Mm. It appears that Ruto is using the dictator's handbook. To my friends, everything. Mm -hmm. To my enemies, the, the law. law. Yes. All right. Brilliant. So, on that note, we have a three-part criteria that we use to judge the headlines by. We ask ourselves, is the headline critical, sorry, topical or speculative, mm -hmm. repetitive or groundbreaking, and finally, thoughtful or just plain lazy? Mm. So, interesting, uh, the star. Mm. Speaking about this man <laughs> from Rook <laughs> Kibet, the total man in Ruto presidency. Mm. Absolutely. Um, I think uh, 2M. Yes. Ruto has finally solidified his, okay. his state. Uh, absolutely. Yes. Today, he just appointed Felix Koske as uh, State House Chief of Staff mm -hmm. and uh, Joseph Nanok as uh, State House Controller. controller. Mm. Now, you have Farouk Kibet, Felix Koske, Joseph Nanok. Your state has been fully fully constituted. Mm -hmm. Right. That is the state moving. Mm -hmm. uh, and we can even say what what offices they'll occupy. Uh, <laughs> we, yeah, we, we can purport and do that. Uh, we think uh, uh, that uh, Farouk Kibet might even attempt to occupy uh, Joseph Kenyon's office mm -hmm. at State House. Yeah. Uh, uh, what is his name? Joseph Nanok will definitely take over from Kenodia Bogwa, mm -hmm. State House Comptroller. Uh, Felix Koske will take over Nzioka Waiter's uh, office. We know where they shall be and, sitting. Uh, and we know where they shall be sitting. Yeah. But uh, right now, William Ruto's state is fully constituted. And to them, the book we recommend is The Gatekeepers. Because that's <laughs> exactly the role they shall be occupying for the president, chief gatekeepers. Mm. So if um, Rigadi Gashagwa cannot get an appointment, <laughs> we know who's holding him back. Absolutely. Yes. If, the enemies if, of his progress. If, if he's waiting at gate A uh -huh. of State House, we know who's, 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 not, picking, who's not picking his call. <laughs> uh -huh. All right, so on that note, I think we should give the star the winning headline Absolutely. for highlighting a very intriguing and mysterious person in Ruto's state. Absolutely. All right, All right so Sorry. onto the political pieces that, <laughs> that we call cartoons in this country where we also have a three-part criteria. Mm. We ask ourselves, is a cartoon humorous or dry, satirical or pessimistic, and finally thoughtful or just plain lazy? Mm. Yes. I want to suggest that we begin with the Daily Nation, Dula. Sure, of course. So in this cartoon, you have a caricature of Ruto and Gashagwa in an office, and they seem to be going through the public service nomination list. Gashagwa says, our allies. But meanwhile, the door to the office is shut, but people are trying to get through it. If you can't see, you can see somebody with a red cashew mm -hmm. and another one with a blue cashew. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Gashagwa and Ruto are wearing yellow. Yes. As mm. if it's suggesting that people from the other side are about to jump over yes. and try to yeah. secure their red, own bag. Red for Jubilee, blue yeah. for Azimio. Yeah, absolutely. Trying to do what needs to be done. Yeah, so, I think as we discuss the PSC, maybe we can look at the star in yeah. conjunction. I think they talk to the, uh, speak to the same Absolutely. Topic. Ozone, you have Shafriga de Gashagwa <laughs> serving lunch. And uh, on the buffet is uh, public appointments. Mm. And the line, that the, the, the key of uh, people serving there is uh, fat cats. And this is what Gado used to draw. There's mm. a fat cat, there's a vulture, there's a pig mm. down there. There's a, a young guy. hustler. There's a young hustler, but the other young hustlers are the back of the queue. Yeah. The guys who are well fed are the front at of the, the very queue. Front. And uh, the caption there is, it's our turn to eat. And mm. I think this is with regard to regarding the Shago statement over the weekend, yeah. saying that uh, Kenya Kwanzaa allies will first be given appointments, and then as uh, <laughs> the rest, uh, if as a mere one appointments, they will come much later. Mm. And, uh, yeah, but I think what was quite course. curious is the fact that he said, mm. it's our turn to, to eat. eat. Yes. Um, it's been one of those silent things that maybe in, in Kenya or in Africa, or just you know governance in general, mm. you do but you don't say. Mm. So mm. for him to come straight up, you know, and out and just say, it is our turn to eat, I thought that was bad form. Uh, I think Rigadi <laughs> needs to go to finishing school, but, you know, <laughs> that's just my thought. Um, I say that we toss the Daily Nation, yeah. we park the star while we look at the standard. Mm -hmm. okay. In the standard, we have a cartoon form, Gamzo. The cartoon depicts two people standing atop a globe. One is a well-dressed white man with a cigar and he is wearing a big button that says developed world. And the cigar is lit and it's emitting a smell that blows out of the frame. But it is above a mm -hmm. very poor and tattered uh, dressed woman. Mm -hmm. She's uh, black, I presume. Mm -hmm. And she's holding an empty bucket that says third world. 
Um, yes, I think this is in it speaks to climate change. I'm not yeah. entirely sure what the consequences are, mm. but what it got me thinking about was a tweet that I saw online. Right. So for those of you who are not aware, a lot of the lakes and rivers that help with um, agriculture and farming in Europe mm. dried up over the course of their summer. And the tweet said, if yeah. Europe's rivers are drying up, yes. mm. where do you think they're going to come next looking for their water? Africa. Africa. You know, we're going to have, you know, round two or three of colonialism. Scramble we're not Africa. careful. <laughs> yes, scramble for Africa, scramble. right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I thought the cartoon was interesting, got me thinking, but Gamzo, we need something funnier. Yeah. yeah? Okay, there was no PD today. Uh, I want to suggest we, we give the winning star. cartoon to the, to the star. star. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Don't forget, we are also on your TV screens. You can find us on Pang Free to Air, Go TV, and Star Times. Have a lovely evening, and we will see you tomorrow for day number 28 of the Ruto presidency. <laughs> Have a lovely evening. God bless.